What's happening guys? It's Shane here again and today we are going to be doing the engineering degree tier list 2021 version. This is going to be an updated list on the one that I did back in I think it was late 2019 or early 2020. And there is a lot that has happened in the world since then obviously so the meta has changed a little bit. Some of the degrees have gone up a bit, some of them have gone down and in this video I'm going to be telling you which ones have improved and which ones are not as good as they used to be. And I'm going to be ranking all of the different engineering degrees from S tier which is the best to F tier, which is the worst. Now, one thing I'm gonna be doing a little bit different in this video is I'm not gonna go as deep into the numbers because I've already made videos on almost all of these individually. And those videos, you can kind of look at the criteria. I go really deep into the numbers in terms of how much they make, how much job opportunity there is out there, et cetera, et cetera. And whenever I go into the numbers with these types of videos, they end up being way too long. And so in order to keep this short, I'm just gonna give you my opinion. And keep in mind, this is just my opinion. Make sure you always do your research on your own. Now, my videos are a fantastic research if you're trying to choose your college degree or figure out what career you wanna do. However, if you need a little bit more, if you want a step-by-step -step systematized process to figure out what you want to do for your career or what college degree you want to choose, you can check out my College 101 course down in the description below for a very limited amount of time. I'm going to be selling it at a steep discount. And if you haven't done it already, go ahead, gently tap the like button. What are you guys waiting for? Come on, hit that subscribe button. Only around 20% of you are subscribed right now, even though I know you're watching the videos. And then also comment down below any thoughts, comments, etc., that you have on the video. But with that being said, let's start it off right off the bat with the first one on the list, which is aerospace engineering. This is gonna be the type of engineering that's gonna study everything that flies through the air, both on the planet, in the atmosphere, or outside of the planet as well. So you're gonna be studying planes, jets, helicopters, etc., but also satellites and rockets. Now my dad actually got a very similar degree to this one. This one wasn't exactly offered uh, back in the day when he went to college, but he got an aeronautical engineering degree. And I can tell you that people who are obsessed with like airplanes and jets and things that fly through the air are very obsessed with them. And if you think about it, we've only been able to fly for about 100 years now. So, I mean, it actually is pretty awesome. Now, in terms of the pay, this one is one of the higher paying engineering degrees on the list. However, one big issue with this one is it's not nearly as flexible as some of the other ones like mechanical engineering. So you do wanna make sure if you wanna get an aeronautical engineering degree, do your due diligence, figure out exactly what career you're trying to go into and figure out if that degree is the best option for you. And by the way, guys, just a warning for a lot like all of these engineering degrees pretty much, they're all very, very difficult. I think the smartest person I ever met was uh, one of my roommates back when I was going to college and he was an aerospace engineer. Uh, just super, super smart guy. And I saw other engineers, they would just study all the time. Okay, so, you know, just keep that in mind. Not trying to, uh, you know, scare you or anything like that, but they are very, very challenging. But with that being said, aerospace engineering is going to go into A tier. Next on the list is going to be architectural engineering. And this one is kind of a combination of an architect and an engineer. So they're gonna be focusing on the design, implementation, building and construction, as well as the technology behind what needs to be in a building. So in terms of the numbers, this one looks pretty decent if you can compare it to all other degrees, but when you're putting it side by side with other engineering degrees, it's not quite as good. Okay, so pay's pretty good, but there's not as much job demand, and this is another one where it's not as flexible as you'd probably want it to be. So for that reason, all things being equal, I'm gonna put this one into D tier. Next on the list is going to be biomedical engineering. And this is one where I said in my last video that the numbers weren't super good for it. However, I think it's kind of a dark horse candidate. And by that, I mean, it might not be amazing right now, but depending on what happens in the future, this one could get more and more popular. And there's so much exciting technology coming out in the world of healthcare and the opportunities are just endless. But with that being said, when you look at the numbers on this one, it isn't quite as good as some of the other degrees. And on top of that, there's a lot of jobs out there that you could go into with a biomedical engineering degree. You could also go into with like a mechanical engineering degree. And so in many cases, it's better to just stick with the more flexible degree if you're not 100% sure you know what you're going for. And so for that reason, I'm going to go ahead and put this one into C tier. 
Next on the list is going to be chemical engineering. This is one that has the reputation of being one of the hardest engineering degrees. Now, in terms of the statistics for this one, very good pay. You're gonna make amazing money if you become a chemical engineer. Unfortunately, a lot of the jobs for chemical engineers are going to require you to move. This is not one of those degrees where there's gonna be jobs in every city. And so the demand for this one is good, but with a caveat, right? With an asterisk on it, because a lot of the time you are going to have to move. Now, if you become a chemical engineer and then you go into the natural gas industry, which is a common career path, uh, a lot of the time that's going to be fluctuating quite a bit, right? So, you know, sometimes there's a ton of jobs in the natural uh, gas industry, and then a lot of the time there's not going to be any jobs at all. So any type of energy related industry oftentimes is going to fluctuate. So for instance, during the pandemic, natural gas industries got absolutely demolished and energy industries in general kind of just got destroyed as well. I talked about this in my stock tier list video where I basically analyzed uh, what happened with different industries and what stocks did well during the pandemic and which ones didn't do so well. So overall, if you're okay with moving and you know what you're getting yourself into, this one can be fantastic. I would say this one is kind of similar to petroleum engineering, but it's a little more flexible. So it's a good option if you're considering petroleum. So overall, I'm going to put this one into B tier. Next on the list is going to be civil engineering. So this one is similar to architectural engineering, but there's more of an emphasis on roads, bridges, dams, etc. Now I would say overall, when it comes to civil engineering, it's just kind of solid when it comes to the numbers. It's not amazing. It definitely doesn't jump off the page. You know, you're gonna make a decent salary, there's a decent amount of demand out there. It's relatively flexible. So it's pretty good. Um, if you're someone who's passionate about civil engineering, then definitely go into it. Um, but it just doesn't jump off the page. Uh, so for that reason, I'm gonna go ahead and put this one into B tier. Next on the list is going to be computer engineering, and this one is fantastic. So it's becoming increasingly obvious that technology is taking over the world automation is coming and computers and technology is just getting better and better. Now the software side of things is fantastic, but let's not forget the hardware side of things as well, which is what computer engineers generally focus on. This one is just really good in every single category, right? You make incredibly good money. Uh, it's a very flexible, you can work in all kinds of different jobs. For instance, you could get a computer engineering degree and then you could become a software developer. Pretty much every industry out there is in need of people who have computer engineering expertise. So it's a very flexible degree. There's tons of demand, it pays really well. Also, if you go into the technology industry, businesses tend to treat you better. So there's gonna be higher job satisfaction. I've talked about that in my videos before where you know there are certain industries, for instance, where you consistently see people reporting higher job satisfaction. And that's not just how much you enjoy doing the job itself, but it's how much the company values you and how much you think you're contributing to the world. And so this one is a no brainer. This one goes into S tier. However, there is another one that after doing a ton of research on it, this one has also moved up to S tier. It was not S tier in the last video that I did. And that is electrical engineering. Now electrical has a lot of the upsides that computer engineering has, but it's even more flexible. So you're not gonna be making quite as much as a computer engineer. However, you're gonna have access to a lot of the same jobs and it's even more flexible. So you're basically gonna be designing and creating products, any type of product that uses electricity. However, a lot of electrical engineers end up working in the technology industry, of course. So for a lot of the same reasons that I ranked computer engineering high, this one is also ranking up there as well. It's just a little bit more flexible. So if you're not 100% sure what you wanna do, this one might be a slightly better option for you. But overall, this one goes into S tier as well. So next on the list is going to be environmental engineering, and this is exactly what it sounds like. It's going to be engineering that involves helping the environment, right? So an environmental engineer might try to create a machine that turns plastic into oil, or maybe a machine that gets rid of some of the CO2 in the atmosphere. So really cool degree. Uh, a lot of people are passionate about this, obviously. Um, but unfortunately, when you compare it to some of the other engineering degrees, I have to be fair here, the numbers just are not as good. You know, if you want somebody to lie to you about these things, there's plenty of channels out there that'll do that. However, on this channel, I'm going to be fair and objectively evaluate these. And objectively speaking, this one just is not as good as some of the other engineering degrees. That doesn't mean that you can't go into it. 
that's awesome if you know you're passionate about it and you want to go into it but when it comes to the numbers it's just not as good maybe it will be better in the future that would be awesome but at this point it's just not as good and so for that reason i'm going to go ahead and put it into c tier Next one on the list is going to be industrial engineering. And this is actually one of my favorite engineering degrees. I am very bullish on this one. It combines a lot of business knowledge with engineering knowledge, and that is just a deadly combination. So you're gonna be learning a lot of the practical, like you know how to make money business side of things, but also some of those skills that are so valuable when it comes to problem solving, which is what engineering teaches you how to do. You know, there's a reason that when you look at what degrees create the most millionaires, the top two by far are engineering degrees and business degrees. And a lot of the time when you see people start companies, the best two combinations of people are engineering type people who you know are focused on creating the best possible product, they're builders, and then the other person is more of a salesman, right? More of a, a business type person. That is just a great combination. A lot of the time people who evaluate startups try to look for founders if it's you know a two-person founder business that have both of these skills. And if you study industrial engineering, you are going to learn both of those skills together. So in terms of the numbers, this one is pretty solid. Uh, you know, it doesn't like really jump off the page. It's not amazing like computer engineering, electrical engineering, etc. However, I think it's pretty flexible. There's so many different positions that you can get into with an industrial engineering degree. And so I am very happy with this one. Right now, I'm gonna put it into A tier, but I could see this one actually rising into S tier in the near future. Next one on the list is going to be marine engineering. And this is going to be the type of engineering that is going to be focused on vessels that float in the water. And not just ones that float like boats and oil rigs, but also submarines. Now this one has decent stats when it comes to how much you make, but I will say that this one does suffer when it comes to the job opportunities out there. The big problem with this one is a lot of the time jobs that can be done by a marine engineer can also be done by a mechanical engineer. However, with mechanical engineers, they have tons of other options and marine engineers kind of pigeonhole themselves. So when it comes to the stats, comparing this to other types of engineering degrees, it's not amazing if you compare it to all degrees out there, it's still relatively decent. So if you're someone who is super passionate about submarines and ships and stuff like that, still go into it. However, you know, just being fair here, uh, I'm gonna put it into C tier. Next one on the list is going to be materials engineering. Now materials engineering is gonna focus on working with metals, ceramics, and plastics in order to create new materials that can be used in products. And there are of course a ton of really amazing uses for this. You see, you know, quantum computing for instance, that's one obvious example. A professor just recently created a new material that can keep buildings cool without using air conditioner, that's another example. But the only problem here is this is a professor of industrial and mechanical engineering, right? Not a materials engineer. And you see that over and over again, where a lot of the time materials engineering inventions are you know, created by chemical engineers and mechanical engineers. So it kind of has that same problem where there's a reason why there are so many other people that can do their jobs. However, they are kind of pigeonholing themselves into certain careers, right? So flexibility is very important here. Um, you know, comparing this one to a lot of other careers out there, it's still pretty solid. However, if you're gonna compare it to engineering degrees, unfortunately, the numbers just aren't going to be as good. I will say though, that this one is a little bit of a dark horse candidate for me. Um, right now, I'm gonna be putting it into D tier. However, I could see in the near future, this one rising up. Next one on the list is going to be mechanical engineering. And this is the perfect degree if you're not 100% sure what you wanna do because I think it's the most flexible engineering degree. There are so many different directions you can go with a mechanical engineering degree. You know, if you do your due diligence, you do your research, and you know exactly what career you're gonna go into, some of these other degrees are better. However, if you're not 100% sure, mechanical engineering is a really good go-to engineering degree. This one has relatively solid numbers pretty much across the board, and it's also very flexible. So this one is going to go into A tier. Next one on the list is going to be one that was highly requested. People were so mad that I left it off the original list, and that is mechatronics engineering. 
So this one is kind of a combination of mechanical engineering with electrical engineering and robotics. And this one has so much hype behind it. People are super, super excited about this one. And I did an entire video on it. And to be honest with you, there's not a whole lot of really solid data out there about mechatronics engineering just because it's so new. But with that being said, the data that is out there is extremely promising. And this one is just really cool. I'm pretty bullish on this one. I think it's going to be fantastic. Right now, I'm gonna give it an A tier status, but I could see it moving to S tier in the near future. Next one on the list is going to be a degree that's technically not an engineering degree, and that's gonna be most engineering technology degrees. Right, so one thing I saw when I was reading comments on my YouTube videos and doing research is a lot of people get these mixed up with engineering degrees. Engineering technology degrees are not the same as engineering degrees. And a lot of people think that schools do this on purpose where they kind of make it sound like it's an engineering degree when in reality it's not. And when you look deep into the numbers on these, the numbers are not nearly as good as engineering degrees are. Now, there's still a few that are all right, and I talk about those in some of my other videos, but overall, engineering technology degrees are going to get F-tier status. Next on the list is going to be network engineering, and this is kind of a combination of information technology and engineering. So you're basically going to be working on different networks in order to store and transfer information. Now, after hearing that, you probably think that that sounds fantastic, but after doing some research on this one, it's just not as good as a lot of the other engineering degrees. And I think one of the big reasons for that is because of the fact that you're basically competing against different information technology, information technology management degrees, and there's already plenty of people who are very, very good at that. So it's a bit of a redundant degree in many cases. You're going to be competing against a big pool of people who are very experienced in information technology. That doesn't mean that there are some things that you can do that they wouldn't be able to do, but overall, when it comes to the numbers here, uh, this one is not super good, still decent, I'm gonna go ahead and put it into C tier. Next on the list is going to be nuclear engineering. This is another energy related engineering degree. And like I said before, all of the energy related degrees are going to be very volatile, right? So whether it's uh, petroleum engineering, environmental engineering, or nuclear engineering, all of them are extremely volatile. There's so many different things that could happen in the world. A war could break out, a new politician, uh, a global pandemic, and all of a sudden you go from you know having a fantastic job to pretty much all of the employees get laid off. But then a few years later, it might reverse and you can get your job right back. Now I'm personally a huge fan of nuclear engineering. I think it's a fantastic way of collecting and storing energy. But overall, when it comes to the numbers, this one is going to go into C tier. Next on the list is going to be petroleum engineering, and this is the highest paying engineering degree on the entire list. It is almost ridiculous how much money you can make straight out of college with a petroleum engineering degree. In fact, it's the highest paying degree period at the bachelor level. But with that being said, there are a lot of downsides to it. I talked about the problem with different energy related degrees and we saw in the last year or so, they got absolutely crushed. Petroleum companies and just energy related companies in general had to lay off a ton of people. Another bad thing about this one is a lot of the time you are going to have to move somewhere in order to get a job. Sometimes these are not going to be very desirable locations. They might be in the middle of nowhere next to a tiny town in Texas or out on an ocean rig or something along those lines. However, if you're willing to do that, you can get paid a ridiculous amount of money. Now, it does look like these companies are recovering as we're getting towards the end of the current situation. And so for that reason, this one, is going to just sneak into B tier. If I did this a month ago, I'd probably say this is in C tier, but I've been kind of monitoring the market and everything, and it's looking like it's going to uh, recover. And so this one is just gonna sneak into B tier for now. Next one on the list is going to be software engineering. Another one that I left off the list last time. And one thing I will say about this is, uh, and actually I just kinda wanna say this in general, is sometimes I get comments like uh, from people from other countries, and in some countries, software engineering and computer science are essentially the same thing. And there is a ton of overlap there, so it kinda makes sense. However, here in the US, they are not exactly the same thing. There are some differences. However, when you look at the numbers, they are both fan 
fantastic. Software engineering numbers look amazing. Now, one thing I'll also say is uh, a lot of the time I'll get comments from people from India, for instance, saying that engineering degrees in India are not good, right? So engineering degrees have basically become saturated in India and you can't get a good job unless you go to a really good college or a really good university. So that's why I always try to remind you guys, you know, I do my research based off of US statistics. There is going to be some overlap with other countries. However, it's not always going to be the same. And so you definitely need to do your research. But with that being said, software engineering easily makes it into S tier status. Before you leave, check out my other videos right here. I made them just for you. Go ahead, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, ring the notification bell, and comment down below any thoughts, comments, criticisms, etc. that you have on the video, especially if you're somebody who's actually gotten one of these degrees. I want to hear your opinion on it. Let me know if I got the meta right, if there's anything that I should change here, and uh, I will see you guys next time. Have a good one.